Hello, my name is uh, Florian Kaltenberger. I'm an assistant professor at uh, Euricom. And today it's my pleasure to present to you uh, a demo of uh, the open interface 5G non standalone system um, with a commercial off the shelf phone. All right. Before I start, um, for those of you who don't know, I want to quickly um, explain what Open Air Interface is. So Open Air Interface is an open source uh, software that implements uh, 3GPP technologies. So starting from uh, LTE, which is also 3GPP release 8, um, going on to LTE Advanced, release 10 to 12, LTE Advanced Pro, release 13, 14, and now, what I'm going to show today is the first version of the 5G um, implementation of 3GPP, which is also called Release 15. Open Air Interface um, fell, spans the full protocol stack of, um, of the 3GPP standard. So we have the whole radio access network, um, including eNodeB, 4G eNodeB, 5G GNodeB, 4G UE, and 5G uh, UE. But we also have uh, the core network, uh, the 4G core network comprised of the MME, HSS, SMP gateway. And um, we'll be also releasing very shortly the 5G core comprising the EMF, SMF, and UPF. So the 5G core will be needed later for the standalone version of, um, of 5G. Open Interface works with um, on, on uh, off-the-shelf computing platforms and off-the-shelf software-defined radio platforms, um, for example, the USRP. In fact, what we're going to be using in the demo is, is the USRP. However, Open Air Interface can also be used for um, simulation. Um, so we can do, you can do link-level simulations, and, um, but you can also do system-level simulations. So Open Air Interface makes it feasible today to put um, 4G not be, 5G G not be, 4G PC or 5G core in the commodity x86 based computer or in a data center. Um, and allows you to build um, your own network at a, at a very low cost and, and play around with, uh, with the network um, and implement new features. The objectives of Open Interface are to build a community of individual developers, academics, and major industrial players. Um, that embrace open source for 5G and to provide a, a common playground um, for this for these different um, groups of people. And um, the idea is with to have a, a real impact on, on 3GB systems with this open source reference implementation of um, 5G. All right. Uh, the demo I'm going to show you today is the 5G um, new radio non-standalone access. Um, so in this version, the, the 5G G node B uh, that, uh, that uses the, the new radio technology um, can only work together in an existing LTE network. Um, so if a user uh, so a user would first would need to be connected already to a to a 4G network, and only if the user is has 5G capabilities and if the user is um, in the vicinity of a of a 5G G node B, then the network will initiate um, a 5G connection. Um, and the user will actually be uh, connected to both 4G and 5G at the same time. So all of the control plane interfacing will still happen with the 4G link, whereas the data plane will go over the 5G link. So this is actually the, the system which is uh, mostly deployed today. Uh, standalone access, which will be the next step, um, does not require um, a 4G network or a 4G core, but instead um, requires um, a 5G core instead of the 4G core. All right, so I'll be showing this in the demo. And what I would like to point out in the demo is this um, 
connection procedure, the NSA connection procedure, um, which we'll be able to analyze in the in the logs after the demo. So what happens is that um, after the, the 4G UE is connected to the to the e B, which is also called the master node, um, the master node will send the SG node B addition request to the G node B, which is also called the slave node, which is then acknowledged by the SG node B addition request. Uh, acknowledge. And then the E node B has also all the parameters of the of the 5G uh, G node B, and it will send those um, over the 4G link to the uh, to the UE as part of the RC connection reconfiguration. Once the connection reconfiguration is completed, the UE um, the E node B will send the reconfiguration complete to the to the G node B, and it will also initiate the modification of the of the radio bearer to switch it to the to the 5G cell, so that all the traffic then flows over the 5G cell. Um, once the bearer modification is complete, um, the MME sends a bearer modification confirmed to the node B, at which point the UE then uh, can initiate the random access procedure on the 5G link. And once the random access procedure is complete, um, we can have a, a traffic flow uh, between the, the UE and um, the S gateway over the, over the 5G link. All right, so much for the theory. Let's um, get started with the demo. Hello, my name is uh, Florian Kaltenberger. I'm an assistant professor here at Euricom. And uh, today I would like to show you our 5GNR non standalone test bench. The setup here. Um, actually combines multiple test benches in one. We have um, the USAP N310 up there, we have an X310 here, but the ones we're going to use for the demo right now are actually these two B210s down here, where one of them, the right one here, serves as the E B. Um, so this one is operating in band 7 and you can see you have the duplexer here for band 7 and the other um, B210 serves as the front end for the GLB. Um, this is operating in TDD and uh, at the moment we don't have a dedicated front end for it so we simply use two antennas, one for TX and RX. Both of the uh, USAPs are connected to antennas here in this Faraday cage. Um, where I also have the phone uh, that we're going to use, which is an Oppo Reno 5G. Um, so let's go and get started. So let's get started. First we're going to launch the Enode B from using this uh, command line here. Okay, Enode B is running. And then we're going to launch the Gnode B from this window here. Okay, and we can see it's running too. And both your APs are transmitting receiving, as you can see here. And now we're going to wake up the phone from airplane mode. And we can see up here F5G connection. Okay, now that the phone is connected to the 5G network, let's see if we can send some pings. Yes, we can. And we can also try and send some uh, iperf traffic. Okay. Alright, so now I have started the Wireshark application here on the phone. Okay, and I'm going to Stop the ping and launch an iperf here on the screen. And we can see here that the traffic is being received at the phone. Okay, at the moment the throughput is not very high, but we are working on that. 
And that completes the demo. Thank you for watching. All right. Um, to finish up, I want to show you um, a log that was recorded from the from the demo I just showed you. Um, so I recorded this using using Wireshark um, on the on the machine of the Enode B, and I also activated the um, the T Tracer Mac PDU to Wireshark functionality to get also the internal logs of the of the Enode B, uh, especially the ones of of uh, of RRC. Okay, so what you can see here in this um, in this trace is um, all the S1 AP messages okay, between the E node B and the core, the X2 AP messages between the E node B and the G node B, and the LT RC messages um, of the E node B. Uh, these three filters that I added here are simply to filter out the system information and master information uh, blocks that are sent periodically and the clutter, the clutter the view. Okay, so what you can see here is um, at the beginning is the normal uh, LTE connection procedure. So first, uh, the E node B connects with the um, um, with the core network. Uh, the E node B connects with the, over the S1 AP. The E node B connects with the um, uh, G node B over the X2 AP. And um, then we start the. Um, connection procedure of the UE with the E node B. So it starts with the RC connection request, connection setup, attach, um, then the E node B um, verifies with the core network if this uh, sends an attach request to the core network, um, and so on. So I won't go into details here. I will only uh, point out that Here, at the, at the towards the end of the connection procedure, the the E node B asks the UE for the UE capabilities, and the UE sends back um, its um, its UE capabilities, which also include the um, um, the information uh, what radio access types it supports, and here you can see, for example, that it supports EUTRA, so this is LTE, um, but it also supports here at the end you should be able to see that it also supports um, 5g and r um, yeah you see it uh, you can see the release 15 parameters here at the end of the capability information um, so once the UE once the E node B sees that the UE supports 5G, it sends the SG node B addition request, um, and um, which is acknowledged by the SG node B addition re request acknowledge, and then it sends the RSC connection reconfiguration to the UE, um, and <clears throat> it further sends to the core network the ERAB modification indication and gets back the modification confirm. Um, and then basically the data transfer is, is set up. Another thing that you can see here are the RRC measurements. So um, these include measurements of the, of the 5G cell. Um, release eight, release eight. Yeah, here, for example, we have a measurement from um, the 5G cell, um, which reports simply the, the RSRP and RSRQ measured on the, on the SSB of the, of the 5G cell. All right, that um, concludes the presentation and the demo. Thank you, everyone, for, for watching.